A while ago, I asked uh, one of our watch specialists, Paul, about people who don't fly or dive buying aviation watches and diving watches. And he said that all that matters when you purchase a watch is how it makes you feel when you make that purchase. Whether you enjoy wearing it and whether you appreciate the history and the mechanics that have gone into making that incredible watch. Perfect response. I mean, I am not a diver or a flyer or a racing driver, but I can appreciate the incredible craftsmanship that's gone into making a Rolex Daytona or a Rolex Sea Dweller. So let's compare the two and see how two iconic watches in their own fields of diving and racing compare. First, let's look at the history. The tagline of the Sea Dweller is the watch that conquered the deep. And the Daytona has a tagline of a watch born to race, again, straight from Rolex's mouth. Within the history of the Sea Dweller, something that makes it iconic is that it was the first watch, alongside the Submariner and another brand's watch, to use the helium escape valve, a device that allows helium atoms to escape the watch during extreme pressure changes to prevent damage to the watch. Now, of course, this is one of those elements that makes it an iconic diving watch. Originated in 1967 with the deep sea version, that's this version I've got in front of me, coming out in 2008. The Daytona Beach in Florida was the main place in the world to beat speed records from 1903 to 1935, including the 1935 record break of Malcolm Campbell in the Bluebird, and he famously wore a Rolex. So for that period, Rolex was associated with racing. In 1959, the Daytona International Speedway opened, and Rolex is their official timepiece. So Rolex introduced the Daytona watch in 1963. So again, it's a historical link between that watch and that field. Let's look at the exterior of the watches now. So on the Sea Dweller, this version I have here in front of me is the deep sea version. It can go to 3,900 meters deep, thanks to the ring lock system. Now that's something that can withstand incredible pressure that again, ties this watch to the field of diving. Looking more at the exterior, we've got a date window at the three hour mark, but there's no chronograph. Of course, because you wouldn't need to time anything when you're diving. It's almost like a lack of a chronograph is adding to how iconic the Sea Dweller is in terms of diving. It doesn't need one. Whereas you look at a racing watch like the Daytona, and of course it has a chronograph. It has a second hand in the centre, which can be as precise as one eighth of a second. That's what those little divisions around the edge are. It also has an hour counter at the nine hour mark and a minute counter at the three hour mark. The Daytona, 40 millimeter. Water resistance going to just 100 meters, because of course, why would you need to take this watch diving? <laughs> it is a racing watch. The Sea Dweller has a bezel that is unidirectional, because again, that fits the diving theme. When you're underwater, you can only lose time, you can't gain it. The Daytona, has a static bezel that doesn't spin at all because again, why would you need it? It's a racing watch. And the Daytona has a tachymeter around the upside, which is perfect for racing again. Tachymeter is a way to work out the average speed of a certain car or person or whatever, uh, which of course, perfect for a racing watch like the Daytona, but not needed on a diving watch. The last point in the exterior of the watches that really solidifies where these watches sit in their fields is on the Sea Dweller, the bracelet has a glide lock system, allowing very fine adjustments of the bracelet without using any tools. Perfect for fitting over a diving suit. Also has a flip lock extension link as well, just for some extra customization. Now, of course, the Daytona has a certain fashionable element to this. So those practical features wouldn't necessarily fit. You know, a Daytona doesn't need to grow and shrink and grow and shrink on someone's wrist. Let's compare a couple of the interior elements of the watches. So on the Daytona, we've got a chronograph, of course. That's possibly the main feature about this watch. Whereas in the Sea Dweller, there is no chronograph because why would you need one underwater? As I've mentioned before, the helium escape valve is on the Sea Dweller as well. Of course, not needed on a Daytona because you won't be taking Daytona underwater. Let's look at the movements of the two watches. So the Sea Dweller Deep Sea has the caliber 3235 self-winding mechanical movement, whereas the Daytona has the caliber 4130 self-winding mechanical movement. 
A certain watch existing within a certain theme, like aviation or racing or diving, is more than just about what features they do have. It's about what features they don't have. What features don't they need? You know? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Please tell me below in the comment section. I want to know all of your thoughts. But in the meantime, please subscribe to the Burrell's YouTube channel to stay up to date with all of our videos as we release a new one every single week. And click the links below to check availability of any of our watches and find out which brand suits you.